Hello, I'm Anna Raimondi coming to you from the Angel Cooperative in Ridgefield, Connecticut. Welcome to this episode of Talking to the Dead in Suburbia. Today, our guest is Daniela Pantoliano. Daniela is the child of a very dear friend of mine, Nancy Pantoliano, and her husband, Joey Pantoliano. So welcome, Danny. I'm so happy that you could be with us today. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, we are I feel too. honored to be asked and invited. Oh, well, thank you. Um, <laughs> Danny is a filmmaker. Currently, she is a writer, director, and cinematographer for the Brooklyn-based company Real Lark. Did I say that right? Real Lark. Real Lark. Yeah. Real Lark. Uh, she hosts a podcast, No Kidding Me Too, in an effort to feel less alone in her, emo her emotions, traumas, and disease. Her podcast encourages listeners to be vulnerable and intimately share with loved ones the important conversations about emotions, trauma, and just getting through the day. So how did you get into um, No Kidding Me Too? So No Kidding Me Too is the organization my father started when he first uh, found out he was um, diagnosed with depression and was dealing with all of his addictions and he kept telling people and they would always say, oh, no kidding, me too. And he's like, oh, this is like a real issue. This is something everybody's affected by. Either they have it themselves or they knew someone in their family that had it that affected them. So he started this foundation a long time ago and it was using the power of celebrity to get people to start talking about it. I mean, he was like one of the first people to like start talking about mental illness in that industry, in that space. Um, but he kind of got discriminated against a little bit for it. Like people, people weren't ready yet, like they are now to really open up and talk about it. I mean, since he started it, so many celebrities have started their own versions of something like that, or just like are coming out with all their mental health issues and just starting to talk about it. And it's becoming a way more acceptable thing, which is the whole point of what he was trying to do. And it's the whole point of what we're trying to do with this podcast. And I told him, like I think a couple of years ago I was like you should just do a podcast like talk to different celebrity guests about their like traumas their careers just how it all intertwines itself and so that someone could listen and be like oh I really love Bonnie Hunt oh my gosh I had no idea she grew up with some trauma and she struggles with this stuff too that makes me feel so much better about my own struggles like if someone I see on the screen can have a day where they can't get out of bed that makes me feel way better about the days I can't get out of bed so um after the pandemic I would like to hold my dad again I was like now I think is really the time to do it and I said I'd do it with him and we've been doing it we did one season we're working on our second season now and it's been wonderful it feels so good to have these conversations with people because it truly affects everyone and you know what's so wonderful is because he's an actor and he has a platform. And so people will listen to him, okay? Mm -hmm. And they will look at this as well. If, if he can come forward with this, I can too. Um, so I think it's great that, um, that you're doing that with him, um, you know, as, as a team. How did his trauma affect you? Oh, <laughs> well, I talk about it every other week in therapy. Yeah. <laughs> so he, he had a rough upbringing, grew up in the projects of Hoboken. Um, I live in Hoboken now. Um, his mom definitely struggled with addictions and mental illness. But back then it was just like, you're just Italian. You're just crazy. You know, like you just like to drink. It's not a problem. Um, and so that affected him. Trauma, you know, affects people. People affect people. It's all passed down. Um, and... So for me, I struggle with, um, I'm a big people pleaser. Like whenever dad would be in one of his moods, um, I was always the one to settle him. I was always the one to calm him. So that affects me in my day to day. I like to people please. I don't like to ruffle any feathers. Um, his trauma, he, he sometimes would show love by being this big voice and by trying to start a fight and because that's what his parents did that's like if mom wasn't yelling at you she didn't love you um and as a kid you don't understand that so you just think 
your parents yell a lot and that scares you. So even to this day, when people yell around me, um, I freeze and I'll start to cry. Even if it's not yelling at me, if it's like my friends are like starting to get into a heated argument, I start to feel a trauma reaction, like my stomach, I'm like, oh, how do I defuse the situation? It's like, they're fine. I don't need to do anything. But it reminds me of the times when my parents would fight. Um, and yeah, my, my body still reacts to it. I still go back to being that little kid. Yeah, you know what? I think that you're right. Growing up in an Italian family where they're always arguing, when I first got married, if my husband didn't argue back with me, even though he's Italian, but he's a middle child and he was just the quiet one, the diplomat. If he didn't respond to me, I, I felt very lonely. Like, why aren't you yelling back at me? Show me some emotion. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's, it's how we're raised and then how we deal with it and recognizing maybe this isn't a good thing. Okay, but and what were the coping mechanisms we, we used that may not be the correct ones? Um, mm -hmm. and, but you also use yoga to help you, don't you? Yeah, so I do yoga. I haven't done it in a while just, and I really need to get back to it because um, it really just, it makes you, it puts you in the present moment. Like when I do yoga, I don't think about what happened before class. I don't think about what's going to happen after class, specifically when I do aerial yoga, just because it's a little more challenging. So it's like, okay, I really need to think about what my body is doing in this moment and being able to go to that space and connect with your breath. You take that off the mat with you. I always, when I would teach classes, I was always say that like what you did here in this hour practice, take it off the mat with you and remember that breathing when you're struggling in your day-to-day -day life, because just coming back to that breath can save you in so many different ways. Yeah. And, and it's that's important. like what I love about that. I think people forget that because we, I mean, it's involuntary, you know, that this breath that we have can heal us, you know, mm -hmm. especially if we're breathing properly. Right. Um, yeah. So, and, and how does um, your spiritual beliefs tie in with your, your mental health and what kind of has happened around you? So I'm a very spiritual person. I'm, I'm not religious. I'm spiritual. I believe in energies. I believe in chakras, like all the yoga stuff. That's all, that all really resonates with me. Um, and I think also just when it comes to like, when I deal with like my mental illness, if I'm in a situation where I'm like starting to panic, I, I go back to the breath and I just, I try to calm myself with like using the energies. And I would like to be more into like the crystal aspect of all of that. I just don't know a lot about that yet. Um, but I don't know if I've practiced a lot of my spirituality with my mental um, health and I should probably do that more. Um, well, do you meditate? I think also I, meditating is hard for me. Um, I, I haven't done it. I haven't really tried it because okay, I have been two suggestions. My mind, I have ADD. So my mind is like, oh, if I get one thought, it's like, blah, 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 and then I'm gone. Okay. Two suggestions. Um, look up John Cabot um, Zinn. Uh, he has a masterclass. It's mindful meditation. So it's not about stopping your thoughts. Okay. Oh, I, okay. I like that. Yeah. It's not about, it's mindful. Um, and so when you meditate in his way, and he's very smart, um, you know, he's a doctor. Um, he really has um, put this in a place where people who can't shut down their minds can meditate it well. And it's being in the moment, you know, because a lot of mm -hmm. with anxiety and stress, as you know, you're not in the moment, you're projecting into the mm -hmm. future. This keeps you yes. in the moment. Um, that'll really help you. And if you also go to yeah. Sacred Acoustics, um, um, Eben Alexander and Karen Newell's um, website, and if you can look, you can even listen to the podcast that I did with them last year. They do a meditation with um, beats, sound beats, um, and they work with your brain waves. 
And so it's, you just Ooh. listen to it and go off on it. That may really, that may really help you. And for anyone else yeah. out there who has, you know, problems with um, meditation, these, this is, these two are very good tools to use. I highly recommend them. Highly, highly. They'll really help you, Danny. You know, so I love try, that. Yeah. So try, try, try that, you know, and but yeah. when you connect to your breath, okay. Do you feel like you're correct connecting to anything higher than yourself? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like, like there's just more out there. And also I'm, I, I tie my spirituality to nature a lot too. So like just being outside every now and then, especially during the pandemic when I was just, cause I wasn't working like all my jobs, I, I couldn't do anything. So I really struggled. Um, and when I would go outside, I would just breathe and I would like feel the air. And I was like, there's just so much more than me. And that gave me a calming feeling. And I feel like sometimes it could do the reverse. It's like, there's so much more than me, but it was just like, there's so much more than me. There's so much more than this moment and what I'm feeling in this moment that like, it's going to be okay. Yeah. And I think that's divinity, yeah. whatever you want to call divinity, you know, nature, like is a church, you know, is a temple is, yes. is yes. what we are, you know, that's, mm -hmm. that's it. And it's healing, you know, really healing. Even if you just, you know, sitting outside on a chair, you know, just being, people just don't know how to be. And I think with the yeah. pandemic, you know, the, the crisis we're having now is the mental health crisis because people who didn't have issues with mental health or did are experiencing it greater now because it's not normal for human beings not to socialize. It's not normal to be locked in a space. None of that is normal for us as a species. And so people are acting out around it. Have, have you seen that like with your podcast or... Because you you weren't doing oh, the, yeah. you doing the podcast during the pandemic or you weren't no no it it happened after once things started opening up again um, no it's it's not normal um, for people to be isolated like that and it's fun, one of the things my mental health does is put me in isolation like I I don't want to be like I I retreat because I don't want to. I don't want to talk about it. Like, I don't want to have to tell you why I'm feeling this way or like being around lots of people sometimes will give me anxiety, even though I was always like, I always thought of myself as like an extrovert and a social person. But then I'm realizing now, like maybe I was always an introvert, but I just, because of society's expectations, I put myself into the extrovert mold. And now I'm realizing I'm both and that both are okay and both are super healthy. That's the two aspects of your personality. There's the one aspect which you conform to society and you wear as kind of a mask and you say, this is who I am because this will accept me. And then there's the real you, the real self, the soul self that says, you know, it's okay to be a little quiet. It's okay to be in that place where I'm kind of actualizing who I am. So the fact that you found it at this young of an age, because sometimes people never find that, you know, kudos yeah. to you, because that's really, that's really, really good. Um, you know, I think that's, you know, one of the things that many celebrities, you know, suffer with, they wear a mask, you know, because they have to appear a certain way and they lose themselves in the process, which also mm -hmm. leads to problems with mental health. Um, but you also um, are interested in being a filmmaker. Um, and so, you know, how does that help you with your emotional journey, you know, creating? So I, so filmmaking is so, so I always, um, I've discovered recently, well, I guess not recently, but something I always struggled with is like, I don't, maybe I haven't found it yet. Like my true passion in life. Like I always grew up with people were like, Oh, go after your passion. And my passion, especially in filmmaking, I have a passion to do this. I, this is my passion. And I'm like, I just like doing it. I don't feel that like extreme pull. And I don't really feel that to anything. Maybe I feel it towards like, to like animals and like children. Like I really want to be a mom one day. Um, but with filmmaking, 
I, I happened upon this program and I did this program and I did it and I was like, oh, I'm, I'm good at it. And I really enjoy doing it. And I really enjoy being around the people. For me, it's the people part of it. It's that connecting with people and creating something together, collaborating on something together. So um, when I go to work right now, I direct in a DP, which is the camera and lights um, for this company in Brooklyn. And when I go, it's really fun because sometimes we'll get actors who are newer. So it's really fun to like help them get to that point, like that teaching aspect of it, I really like. Um, and it also helps me again, be in that moment where it's like, okay, I'm here and I'm here with this person. So I can't be thinking about my anxieties go away because I'm, I'm right here with them. I can't be thinking about what made me sad this morning or what might make me sad later, because right now you're making me really excited because we're working on something. We're working on a story and we're working on a moment for you that you're going to just like nail when that camera rolls. Um, so that, yeah. that helped a lot. I think that the word passion um, is misused, you know, you know, in finding your mission in life. It's so people will say, well, what's your passion? And, you know, well, I don't know. What is passion? You know, you know, then you get into philosophical. What is passion? It's really what inspires you. Okay. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be like this great passion, you know, your soul path, you know, and your journey and your mission is based upon what inspires you. It doesn't have to be live or die, but what inspires you. And in your case, with your path, you're brought into filmmaking. And it makes sense. Um, you know, you come from that kind of a family. It's what was in front of you. And you chose your parents, you know. So in choosing them, you chose to kind of follow this path. And this path has brought you there. But what inspires you may not be the filmmaking may be the connection with other people and what you bring to them and what they bring to you. So yeah, I feel like, you know, sometimes we need to break things down to the least common denominator, you know? Yeah. So, you know, like that's kind of what it's, you know, what it's about. So like, when I look at my, my mission, um, so is my mission to connect with those on the other side or is my mission to help people heal? You know, um, is my mission to, be with other people to help them see the light that inspires me and i think that sometimes people get caught up in that you know overthink things because we're living our we're living our missions you know we deviate and then we come back so you know i think that's pretty much like what you're saying you know and, and it helps you heal because whenever yeah. you're following your soul mission you will heal along the way and we heal until we die and then we heal after that too so talking about dying, um, do you believe that the ones that you lost, the loved ones you lost are, are with you? Yes. Yeah. I, um, I believe in energies. So I think we as humans have so much energy with us. And when we pass on that energy has to go somewhere. And I do think, um, that the people and the animals I've lost are with me, um, and I hope when I go that my energy goes somewhere um, or goes with someone. Um, but yeah, I like, I like that idea. It also helps me not be so terrified of dying because that's a big fear I have. Oh, don't be afraid. I mean, it's right in front of you. I, I can tell you this. Um, there's a woman smoking all around you. Um, I'm smelling smoke. Like, big smoking. And she's saying, I knew better. I knew better. I knew better. Um, smoking. Um, she likes that you're on a healing journey because she was a healer in her own way. She helped people heal. Might've been conventional. Okay. You know, um, but she helped people heal. Um, she was the anchor. Okay. 
ups and downs, ups and downs, ups and downs with her husband, but she anchored them together. Um, they love you very much. They're on both sides of you. Um, they're telling me that both sides of your family are a little crazy. Okay, both sides are a little crazy, um, you know, but it's all good crazy. It's all good crazy. Um, it's happy, it's happy crazy. I, this is gonna sound really nuts, but did, do you know if your father, mother had photographs in the bathroom? My father, my parents? Your father's mother. Oh, my father's mother? I don't know, I'd have to ask him. Okay, because for whatever reason, she's showing me a bathroom with photographs in it. You don't have photographs in your bathroom, do you? I used to, and my parents do. Oh, they do, okay. Um, well, I don't have photographs in my bathroom, okay? <laughs> I don't think I've ever been in anybody's house. I don't remember photographs in your parents' bathroom. Um, I have no, I don't, that's like not a common place, I think, to put photographs. Um, yeah, no, it's definitely not common. <laughs> uh, but, but your grandmother's saying, but it's peaceful. It's bringing family into wherever it was, wherever it is, wherever it is in the house, bring, bring them in, bring, the, bring those photographs in to help you heal. You have been a delight today. I am so happy that you were able to come on and, and to share with everybody about a topic that people should be talking about. The stigma should be dropped. Um, you know, and you also open up to another generation, you know, to young people who need to hear this, you know, I feel like there's less of a stigma with your generation than my generation, because yeah. we were told yeah, you're broken, you're broken. Right. You know, your generation is all in therapy already. They were in therapy, yeah. before, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, especially in Connecticut, you know, I, I don't know, maybe it's my generation's fault, or maybe it's it's not. Maybe we're the generation that says it's okay. Go to the therapist, you know. Um, but whatever it is, you're you're speaking to that generation, and that is absolutely, absolutely wonderful. And thank you to all of you who joined us today. Um, you can check out my website at anaremondi.com. You can listen whatever you want on SoundCloud or on my YouTube channel at Anna Raimondi. Um, please join us again for other episode. I love you all. Namaste. And I love you, Danny. I love you too. This was wonderful.